Good morning and welcome to worship. Good morning. And it's great to be with you this morning. I hope everybody had a good time at the fair uh, last weekend. And thank you for the time off. It was wonderful. Uh, please join us today after worship for uh, potluck meal. I've seen some of the food down there and you're not going to be disappointed and you don't want to leave without it. <laughs> Other announcements? If not, let us stand. Welcome to God and to our presence. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please join me in our call to worship. God has delivered us from all that enslaves us. We take this day to stop and rest, and worship God who sets us free. Let us confess our sins before God and one another. Let us pray. God of peace, we are a restless people, always wanting more, doing more, needing more. But in our rush and chasing after satisfaction, we find we have less time, less meaning, less connection with you, others, and ourselves. Interrupt our frenzied world and guide us back to you. Forgive us for overlooking those in need and neglecting to enjoy and care for this world you have given us. Amen. Our God is slow to anger and quick to part. Come and rest in God's mercy. Receive God's forgiveness for all the ways you have missed the mark. Receive the peace of the Spirit. Amen. We turn to our gathering hymn, number 521, O Day of Rest and Gladness. <laughs>
love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Saving God, you delivered your people from slavery to experience a life of freedom in you. May we live to know this same liberty in your gospel, free from all that should hold us fast. For the sake of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Our first reading this morning is from Deuteronomy, the fifth chapter. God says, observe the Sabbath day and keep it holy. As the Lord your God commanded you, six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work, you or your son or your daughter or your male or female slave or your ox or your donkey or any of your livestock or the resident alien in your towns so that your male and female slave may rest as well as you. Remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt, and the Lord your God brought you out from there with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. Therefore the Lord your God commanded you to keep the Sabbath day. This is the word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The second reading this morning is from Genesis chapter 2. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day God finished the work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Turn to our gospel acclamation. Sunday after Pentecost is from the Gospel according to St. Matthew. Lord, Lord. Jesus said, Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. This time we invite Rebecca and the children forward. Yeah. <laughs> 
2, verses 1 through 3. Sabbath for God. God created the whole universe and everything in it. On the first day, God created light. On the second day, God created the sky. On the third day, God created dry land and filled it with plants and trees. On the fourth day, God created the sun and the moon. On the fifth day, God created all the creatures in the sea and the birds in the air. On the sixth day, he created all the rest of the animals, including people. Do you think that creating made him tired? It's a lot of coming up with stuff, isn't it? So on the seventh day, what did God do? He rested. God loved all the wonderful things that he had made, and since God knew how important it was to rest, he wants to make sure that God's people know how to rest, too. So when God finished creating everything, he took time to sit back and really enjoy it. God wants us to have that kind of rest as well. So since God rested on the seventh day, we're supposed to rest every seventh day, too, which is called the Sabbath, in honor of God's gift of creation to us. Our Jewish siblings rest on Saturday, but Christians rest on Sunday because that's the day that Jesus rose from the dead. No matter when you choose to rest, it's very healthy for all of us. It keeps us from getting cranky, and it allows us to enjoy time with God and all of God's wonderful creation. So let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you so much for all your beautiful creations. We appreciate and honor all the blessings you bestow on us every day. And thank you for the opportunities to sit back and enjoy it once a week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Rebecca, and thank you, children. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, the risen Christ. Amen. Today we're beginning to look at something that we Christians rarely want to talk about. And we aren't alone. The fact of the matter is that most of this country, if not the entire world, does not want to think about it doesn't want to talk about it. Observing, it. observing it is even further from our minds. We want to talk about Sabbath. Our Jewish brothers and sisters are often as negligent as we are. I remember a couple of my high school classmates. Those two didn't talk about their religion or the practices in their family homes. I knew that both of these friends, however, would rarely show up for events happening on a Friday night or during the day on Saturday. It wasn't until I saw pictures online of one family's home years later that I realized that at least one of my Jewish friends was raised to be observant of things that sounded really foreign to me. The pictures were posted by a real estate agent after the last of the older generation had passed on. As I paged through those pictures on my computer, I discovered that the house had two completely separate kitchens. And it became abundantly clear that this family kept a kosher house. Contrast that family with a woman I dated a few years, for a few years, back in the dark ages. She was Jewish, but the only time she shared anything about her background was during the first December of our relationship. As I was busy putting up my Christmas tree and buying presents for family members, my girlfriend, with tongue in cheek, put up what she called her Hanukkah bush. She explained that she was not raised to be an observant Jew. Her family had become so assimilated to the Christian world around them that their Jewish heritage had almost completely disappeared. Kosher was not a concept 
my girlfriend could relate to. And she had no trouble going to work on a Friday evening for an overnight shift. Preparing for worship today, I thought about that commandment to remember the Sabbath day. And then I was a bit surprised when I compared the Exodus version to our reading this morning from Deuteronomy. The Exodus version does not include the charge to remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt. That charge about being slaves opened up a new understanding of the Sabbath for me. I had certainly known that the pharaohs had feared and enslaved the Hebrew people. Good Lord, I've taught it for 50 years. But I certainly could also remember stories like Moses floating in the basket and being rescued by a daughter of Pharaoh. I remember the burning bush, the Red Sea part and the trip up the mountain by Moses to converse with God. What had escaped me were the implications of being a slave in Egypt. Remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt. Well, that statement struck me like a lightning bolt. Suddenly those statements on stone tablets made sense in a whole new way. The surprise for me this week was kind of an answer to a question I had never bothered asking. In giving the people of Israel this covenant in the wilderness, God was offering his people a completely new way of life. As slaves, everything, every moment, every action was dictated by their masters. Slaves did not have to have laws or rules to live by. <coughs> they just had to follow orders. Make bricks. Make more bricks. Gather your own straw to make bricks. Who said you could take a break from your work? Now, out there in the wilderness, for the first time in their lives, they didn't have taskmasters to guide them. They needed some structure in their lives. With that reality in mind, this covenant between God and the people looked new and fresh. Even the creation accounts in Genesis shined under a new light in God's bargain. God had done a lot of work in six days. The rest of the seventh day becomes a question in and of itself. Why did God need to rest? Ready for a surprise? God didn't need to rest. God needed some time to sit back and look at the work that had been done to admire and sit in the awe of that amazing accomplishment. God doesn't tire out or need rest. But all of God's people do. God doesn't need us to set aside a day out of seven to worship and sing praises to the Creator. Nope. The truth of that is that we need that time, that pause, that chance to sit in awe and wonder at the God who would crown an already good creation with beings who could be in fellowship with the one who creates everything. You know, today we are not much different than those Israelite slaves who escaped Egypt. 
Oh, sure. We are usually not being driven and threatened by slave masters or taskmasters 24-7. At least not in the same way that the people of Israel were. Instead, our lives are being controlled by a culture that seems to only place value on material wealth. Today, our kids are growing up in a world of electronics, team and individual sports, growing up with closets full of fancy clothes and shoes. And in many cases, they are so scheduled that finding time to just be kids isn't even possible. When I was growing up, back there in the Dark Ages, we rarely even used the telephone in our home. It sat there attached on the wall and was mainly used for emergencies or to maybe once a month contact a distant relative. When we wanted to connect with our peers and our loved ones, we actually went outside the house, went down the street, went to church youth group activities, or just out for a walk in the woods with our friends. Families were able to gather as families to share a meal and enjoy a day at the lake or whatever. In fact, it was usually only the pastors and maybe one or two gas station attendants in, in the town ever worked on a Sunday. If a worker could only count on a couple of weeks of paid vacation a year, it really wasn't a great hardship. Because there was one day of the week when work was never required. I get tired just thinking about the pace and the demands of life today. So when Jesus makes an offer like the one in our gospel reading today, I'm all ears. When God says, work your six days and then kick back, hey, I'm ready. God doesn't need a Sabbath rest. And God doesn't, God's creatures need a break from all of the ways that we tend to enslave ourselves. The message for us today is pretty simple. We are not meant to be driven 24-7. That isn't how we were created. We need a break from our labor and our stress. You know, observing the Sabbath is not about God needing an ego boost. The Sabbath is all and only about the crown of creation taking care of itself physically, emotionally, and spiritually. So let's kick back, put our burdens on the shoulders of Jesus, and give ourselves the best gift we, gift we can receive. Let's stop the madness long enough to hear our Savior calling, come home, come home. You who are weary, come home. Amen. Let's turn to our next hymn, Softly and Tenderly, Jesus is Calling, number 608. Please stand.
with the whole church, let us affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Together with the community of Christ throughout the world, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Lord, when you freed your people from slavery, it wasn't your desire that we occupy new prisons of our own making. Save us from the bondage of busyness and the traps of distraction and preoccupation with things that aren't important. God of rest, deliver your creation from the oppression of pollution and exploitation, and deliver humans from the illusion that we are the only species that matter. God of rest, we give you thanks for all the joys of this season warmth and growth, recreation, relaxation, and time with loved ones. Protect those who are vulnerable to extreme heat and make us mindful caretakers of those in our charge. God of rest, you are rest for the weary and relief to those carrying heavy burdens. Give your peace and healing to those we name before you today especially Betty, Gerald, Frank, Marty, Greg, Terry, Cindy, Alessandra, Axel, Cassie, Harry and Judy, Trish, Gordy, Andy and Mary, Daisy, Harlan, Leanne, Rick, Herb and Greta, Charles, Kyler, <coughs> Patricia, Kath, Mike, Terry, Chris, Ann, Mona, and their families, and the friends and family of Dr. Richard Pomla. God of rest. Yeah. Bless all the saints who have now found rest for their souls and give us a share in their eternal reward. God of rest, we lift these prayers and those in our hearts into your loving arms, O God, trusting in your abundant mercy. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share the peace. Please be seated to receive our offering.
is at your feet, O God, and the gifts of our hearts at your altar. Receive these offerings given in love and gratitude, and use them for the good work of your kingdom. Amen. Please be seated. The night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. When he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. <clears throat> Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus teaches. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The day to rest and feast is upon us. Come now and join with your brothers and sisters at the table of God's grace. Be fed, be strengthened, be renewed. Come and see what the Lord is good. body of our Lord Jesus Christ and his precious blood, strengthen and preserve you unto eternal life. Peace be with you. Amen. Let us pray. 
We thank you, generous God, for the refreshment we have received at your banquet table. Send us now to spread your generosity into all the world through the one who is our dearest treasure, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please stand. Receive the blessing. As you go on your way, may God go with you. May he go before you to show you the way, beside you to befriend you, behind you to encourage you, above you to watch over you, and within you to give you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We turn to our sending hymn. What a fellowship, what a joy divine. Number 774.